So I got a different kind of video for you today. It's still testing an inverter, but this inverter is built into a 2019 F-250 Super Duty pickup. It's 400 watts, maybe a little bit less when we're driving. We'll find that out, figure that out. What really made me want to do this video is when I was researching this truck, I run across a couple of internet articles that were talking about it and that it would not charge uh, rechargeable batteries for tools. I won't name any brands or anything, but um, if, you had, if you had tools out on the job site and you need to charge batteries like your drills or saws or whatever, that this inverter wouldn't work for that. What I'm gonna do today is hook up my equipment on the road, do a road show and evaluate, see what is going on with the inverter and uh, see if we can answer some questions. So I normally skip showing this part of the video or the setup in each video because I really just do this to check the polarity on the inverters and make sure I don't hook my scope up to the ground up to a hot or something. But um, this time I think I needed to show this. So all of this is is going through the meter or coming out of the inverter, going through the meter to the surge strip and then I'm taking the measurement. So here's why I'm showing this part of the setup this time. Still getting the 112.6.8 volts, which is fine. But when I take the hot, leave it connected, and I touch a ground, I get 56 volts, which doesn't sound right should be 112. So then I take and measure the neutral to the ground and get 52 volts. Hot to what should be neutral is 112, hot to ground is 56 volts. 56 and 52 make 108. So I don't see that as being a neutral. So I wasn't gonna plug the oscilloscope into this inverter, but after I poked around on it with the multimeter, I decided I just had to see what kind of actual ass hattery was going on inside of it. And so set up the scope to read the hot leg and the neutral leg on the inverter. So my setup is inverter, run to the surge protector. Got a little bit of load I'm gonna put on it. Got the oscilloscope taking the readings. That's, that's what you're gonna see on the readings. And to ensure that I had an actual ground to the vehicle, I just run some copper cables all the way back up to the battery. So I'm just going to turn on some a little bit of load. The waveform doesn't look like it changes a whole lot, but we can see the 56, 52 volts, which is what we're looking at on each leg. And if I, now what I, one thing I don't like about having the voltage split on two different legs like that is if I come over and turn the surge protector off, I still have voltage, 56 volts on what should be the neutral because the surge protector just breaks the hot. It doesn't break the neutral. So that surge protector, even though the switch is off, each one of those right there, the, the, the larger slot still has 56 volts on it. I'm, I don't like that. So when I turn the surge protector back on, we see that hot leg light up like it should be.
and the surge protector is off. For me, that's a problem. All right, so on these inverter tests, I like to get right to the load test, first of all. And so right now I've got a 250 watt heater connected uh, to the inverter. It's showing 229 on the meter, but it's also showing 113 volts. I'm thinking they rate that those heaters at 120 volts. And so that's why we're seeing a little bit less wattage than advertised. So I'm, I'm not worried about that. Next up is a 125 watt heat lamp. And that is 344 watts showing on the meter. Add another light bulb to it. 382 watts. All right, 420 watts. Now, one other thing that I've read on these inverters is they put out more power when they're sitting in park, the trucks do, than whenever they're out driving around. That doesn't make a lot of Well, let's pull a little load off of it. All right, we'll leave it at 300. We'll leave it at about 380 watts. So, one of the things I was reading about these inverters is they put out 400 watts when they're uh, sitting idle in park, the truck is, but when you drive around in the vehicle, it is only rated at 300 watts. I don't know why that would be the case. Uh, I didn't realize that inverter output was like an inverse of the cube root of the velocity of the inverter it's traveling. So I am going to drive around with 383 watts on the inverter and we'll just see what happens with that. Actually, I believe it was the Ford owner's manual that said that it was only rated at 300 watts while driving. I believe is where I read that. I'll find that documentation and share that with you. But here I'm, I'm driving and we haven't had the inverter go off yet. Getting back to the battery chargers that don't work on this inverter, I put my voltmeter on and I could see that there was less than 120 volts or 110 volts on the hot leg, what should be the hot leg. And I saw there were 52 volts on what should be the neutral leg. And if this plug was in your house, it would be the neutral. Let's turn that down. And uh, so if I add the two legs up, seemed like it was 56 and change and 52 and change, which makes about 108, 109 volts. And they're showing, it was showing 112 on the meter, on both meters, the one on the screen now and then on my multimeter. So I, my guess is if your battery chargers don't do not work on the Ford inverter, built-in inverter, it's probably because it expects power, it expects the power to look like what comes out of the wall socket at the house. So if there are any Ford engineers watching this and they want their pickups to stand out, you need to look at putting pure sine wave inverters in at least the super duties, but if if not all the F series. Uh, probably in the thousand watt range, 1500 would be great. And a thousand watt pure sine wave inverter 
would do wonders to help folks need to charge their batteries, run inductive loads, and use sensitive electronic equipment on the job site. So anyway, that's all of my rant. I'm gonna back on out. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you wanna see more of them, hit the subscribe button because there will be more on the way. I appreciate you watching. I'll catch you on the next one.